What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be working on my buddy Drew's 22 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. So this is the Pro 4X model. What that means is you probably get additional beefy shocks. So it looks like he's got Bilsteins, you get the all-terrain tires, you get additional cladding, uh, and I'm pretty sure you get additional armor for the underbody. So this is currently his daily driver slash adventure mobile. He does use this for camping, overlanding. He tows a teardrop camper behind it. But he also wants to get into off-roading. So here in the near future, we might see a lift kit coming in. But before that, you know, he's, he's due for tires here pretty soon. So one of the first things that people do with their off-road rigs is they want to upgrade their tires. And the most common question is, what's the biggest tire I can fit on my car? Whether it's stock, wheel, or, or whatever. Anyways, for Drew, we decided to go with the 285 7017 after doing some research. It seems like it's the best size tire that you can fit on a fully stock setup without having to do too much modification. If anything, we might have to just remove uh, a mud flap and maybe uh, do like a melt mod on the plastic liner on the inside. On the stock Pro 4X, on these Nissans, you get a 265 7017 and then there's a 285. If you look at the size difference right there, and then I'll go ahead and insert a picture of the size differences by their numbers. And then we decided to go with an all-terrain tire, Toyo Open Country All-Terrain 3s. These are a great set of tires. They have a 65,000 mile warranty on them. And then if you look on them, you'll see this little badge right here. It does snow here in Michigan. So they're like rated for snow uh, handling or whatnot. Uh, I'll go ahead and insert links of these tires in the description down below if you want to do a little bit more research on them. He did decide to go for an all-terrain tire because he does do a lot of driving on the road versus off the road. But when he does need to go off-road, he will be prepared. So to get the wheel off, you're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket. And if you don't have an impact like I do, you want to break the lugs loose while it's on the ground and then bring it up and then completely screw them off. We'll do a little quick tire lesson on how to swap these out. First thing we want to do is bring your valve core removal tool. And let's take the valve core out, let all the air out. All right, so once all the air is removed from the tire, you want to go ahead and break the bead, but make sure you stay away from the valve area because there's likely a TPMS sensor on the back and we don't want to pry that off because we will break it. So avoid that area, we'll do the front. Avoid the rim as well. So once the sidewall is off the rim, we've broken the bead. Now we have to do the back. So now that we've broken the bead on the back, we're gonna go ahead and remove wheel weights if you have any that are sitting on the edge of the rim. I can go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to this cool tool. Otherwise you could just use a hammer and a screwdriver, just pry it off. So we're just kind of come at it and just pry it off. I just have a soapy water solution here, just like two dollops of just soap and just a whole bunch of water. Just gonna go ahead and spray all around. This will just make it easier for us. Now this is a pretty soft slash big sidewall, so it won't give us too much of a problem coming off. But for lower pro tires, that's when uh, the soapy solution comes in handy. We're gonna go ahead and line up our duck bill with the rim. And then there's a locking mechanism on the back of the arm over here that you screw into place so that this thing doesn't come flying at you in case that decides to malfunction. We're gonna go ahead and Get the TPMS sensor to where it is right behind the duckbill, and that'll help prevent us from damaging the TPMS sensor when we go to pry the tire off. So now I'm just gonna go in with my pry bar. I'm gonna push this side down to give us some slack. Bring it over the duckbill, and rotate, and it just comes up on its own. And then again, we're gonna line up the TPMS sensor right behind the duckbill. Bring this side up. This would probably be easier with two people, but you can do it alone. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go in with your pry bar, you're gonna grab the other side wall, right? And then we wanna bring it as high up as possible, close to the duck bill, pry it over the duck bill, rotate. The tire comes right off. 
easy peasy. As you can see, our TPMS sensor is fine. Make sure the rim is all clean, no debris. Now, before you mount the new tire, there's a couple things you want to check. First off, you want to check if it's directional. Pay attention to which direction uh, you're mounting them. So if they're gonna be on the right side of the car, you want them going, you know, obviously the arrow pointing towards the front. And then out there on the left side, you want the arrow rotating towards the front as well. This isn't that important and you could probably get away without having to pay attention to this, but you'll notice that some tire manufacturers will put a dot, either a yellow dot or a red dot on the tire. The yellow dot indicates the lightest point in the tire. So what you wanna do is the lightest point on the tire, mount it with the heaviest point on the rim. So you want this across directly next to the, the valve stem. If there is a red dot on this tire, the red dot indicates it is the flattest point or lowest point, And that takes precedence over the yellow dot. So if you had a red dot somewhere on here, you want the red dot mounted directly next to this as well. So the other thing you want to pay attention to when mounting these tires is sometimes on tires you either have like raised lettering on one side and flat lettering on the other side like this one or you'll have the the ones that have like the different colored lettering i know like general grabbers they'll have the mud terrains that have the red lettering and that's all a personal preference since i'm mounting these i think you know my buddy's gonna want the raised lettering on the outside so we're gonna go ahead and put the raised lettering on the outside and then leave the flat lettering on the inside. Before we mount the tire, we want to make sure that we lubricate the edges over here so that way we're not damaging the wheel or damaging the tire. And I'll go ahead and insert links in the description down below to all the tools slash product I'm using. So like this lubricant for the tire, this is all off Amazon as well as the applicator. All right. Now that we've got the tire lubricated and we've got it ready to get mounted to the wheel, we went ahead and set our duckbill in place. Now you want to pay attention to the valve stem right here. And you notice there's a TPMS sensor down there. We don't want this in this area because what will happen is as we get this tire rotating around the, the rim, what will happen is you'll get this tire too tight up against this valve stem and it'll just knock it right off. So a good slash safe area to have the valve stem at is... I like to have it between the, between the 7 and 9 o'clock area. That's usually a pretty good slash safe area so we're gonna go ahead and get this rotated for the first sidewall you pretty much just let the duck bill do its thing you can kind of just like hold it into place and it just falls into place all right so again for this sidewall we're gonna go ahead and put the valve stem all the way between the seven and the nine and then pay attention to that yellow dot or red dot in our case we have just the yellow dot we're gonna go ahead and get this underneath the duck bill and since it's a malleable sidewall, pretty much just hold it down. There we go. Release that. Release that. And we're ready for air, but, you know, pay attention. We don't want to fill it up just yet because the jaws on the bottom are grabbing it from the outside. So what we want to do is release the jaws. I don't think we'll need the bead blaster, but we'll see. We'll need the bead blaster. So this one might be a bit of a challenging part is trying to get the tire filled up. As you can see, there's a lot of slack between the edge of the rim and the, the tire, but my tire machine has a bead blaster and the way it works is once the jaws are like pushed out on the rim, the outside of the jaws have air nozzles that push in high pressure air and you might hear it. It's, I'll probably lower the volume on the mic. You'll hear the high pressure air push an air on the outside from the bottom as I fill this up. So right now, if I just fill it regular, air is just escaping. But if I, on the tire machine, I have a two-step process. So like if I, if I step all the way down, the bead blaster will activate as well as the air. And we'll see how that works. I'll just kind of hold this up, activate the, the air and the bead blaster. see that the tire is starting to seat on the rim and you'll hear the little popping that's normal there's another one right there boom there we go we'll fill this up to about 35 ish or whatever his door sticker states and then we'll get it on the balancer now the only reason we have to use the bead blaster for this is because 
the wheel is so narrow compared to the tire. If we did have maybe like a set, so I believe these are 17 by six and a half from the factory. If we had like a 17 by nine or a 17 by eight and a half, I don't think we would have had to have that uh, bead blaster activated, but just letting you know why we needed to use it. Now that we've hit 36 on here, I did 36 because when I go to release this, we're going to lose some air and that'll bring us down to 35. We're going to go ahead and grab our valve core with our valve core removal tool, put those two together. We're going to quickly install this once we get this off. All right, and now we're ready for the balancer. All right, so I won't get into detail on how to use the tire balancer because I do have a pretty decent video on that one. I'll link that down below. But I just wanted to show you guys a quick size comparison between the 265 and the 285. Let's see if I can get them standing. Yeah. All right. All right, guys, so here we are. We got the one side done. And I just want to compare both sides. So here's this side. Kind of take a guesstimate here. Got like the four hands for, I mean, got the four fingers. I can kind of go through here and there. Uh, let's see. Yep. Ooh, that's a tight fit. So we went from like four to like two or even there. And there. That's not too bad. All right. We might have to get rid of that mud flap. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see uh, how bad it is. So it looks like it's rubbing a little on this mud flap. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that mud flap right there. On the back, we should be fine. There won't be any rubbing. Um, I don't know if we need to remove that mud flap. I think we're just gonna keep that one on. So here we are with the mud flap removed. Looks like we're clearing it. Might get some slight rubbing while going on trails. Possibly, but we're good. All right, so to remove the mud flap on the front fenders, and this applies to both sides, you only need a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a flathead or some sort of pry tool to remove these rivets or plastic clips, whatever you want to call them. And so for these, you just kind of come in, pry them out. As soon as you get the, the cap off, I just come out. Two. And there's a third one on the bottom right here. Once those come out, you can go ahead and put them back in. And we just put our rivet back in. Start with the body, then the cap. Let's push it in, lock it in place. Alrighty, so here we are all installed. I'm gonna go on a drive here in a little bit. But first down, we need to torque these lug nuts down to 98 foot pounds of torque, according to the great Google. I thought about removing the rear mud flaps, but then I remember that Drew here has a, uh, he has a teardrop trailer that he tends to tow behind whenever he goes camping or hiking or whatever and the mud flaps will probably come in handy to prevent debris from flying up to his really nice teardrop. So let's get these torqued down, go on a drive and uh, get some first impressions. Right, so here we are driving on a fairly empty road, doing, well, cruising at 45 miles an hour. And just to see if we got a difference in speed, 
looks like it's bouncing between 45 and 46, so not too much of a difference in speed or a fluctuation going up in the tire size. All right, so now we're in an empty parking lot and we wanna see if we get any rubbing when doing sharp turns. So we're gonna go all the way to full lock I'm on the left. Seem to be good. We're gonna go all the way full lock to the right. And we'll slightly turn it back. Well, pretty clear. We are clear. The tire did stuff up the wheel well just a little bit, but you know, we decided to go with this tire size because Drew plans to, you know, eventually at least get a leveling kit or uh, a small lift kit. And once he gets that lift kit, these tires will complement it very well. So, yeah, I think it looks good. I'm glad he went with the 285s and these uh, all terrain tires. Verdict is yes, a 285-70-17 tire will fit on this body style Nissan Frontier. Uh, well, on this Pro 4X. Now, do keep in mind this does have the factory upgraded Bilstein suspension, but I'm pretty sure if you don't have the Bilsteins, you could still get away. Might have some slight rubbing. We had no rubbing here. We just had to remove the mud flaps as shown. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, go ahead and drop them down below in the comment section. I'll go ahead and insert all the links to the tools that I used for this install in the description down below. I'll also include videos of more in detailed uh, how-to videos on how to use a tire machine and balancer if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to do more of this kind of content. So thank you guys for watching. We'll cut to B-roll. See you guys in the next video.